Hello and welcome back to Clarkonomics. In this video, we're going to learn about budgets and utility. So in a previous video, we learned about something called a budget line or a budget constraint. So in this situation, you have $100 to spend and you can only buy two things. You can buy pairs of pants and you can buy shirts. Pants cost $20 a piece, shirts cost $10 a piece. And from there, we set up six different consumption bundles that you could purchase using all of your money. So A, B, C, D, E, and F. At option A, sorry, bundle A, you're only buying shirts. At bundle F, you're only buying pants. And at any point on that line is a possible point of consumption when you're using all of your money, because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at consumption here. Although this works like a production possibilities frontier, we're not looking at production, we're looking at what somebody is consuming, what somebody is buying. We also said that any point inside of the budget line is possible, but not using all your money, so underutilizing, and any point outside of the budget line is unaffordable. You don't have enough money to make that happen right now. But what we didn't say is, what is the best point on that line? That is, of all of the efficient points, A through F, what is the best point to consume at? And you might have just some you know, judgments like, oh, it's C or D, because you're getting like a little bit of both things. But the better way to look at it is with utility. You have to have utility information in order to make a determination about which point is best because any of those bundles are efficient, right? And if they're efficient and we're only looking at efficiency, bundle A is just as good as bundle F or C or D or any of the other ones. So you have to look at the utility that you get from each bundle. So what I've done is I've taken the table from the previous slide and I've added a few more columns that I'm going to reveal as we get further into this. But uh, the key thing here to remember about utility information is that it's different for everybody. So I made up some numbers, for instance, for total utility from pants, right? These numbers didn't come from anywhere. These are just made up numbers. The other thing is, since we're measuring utility, we're using these fictional units called utils, just little units of happiness, if you like to think of them like that. So these aren't dollars or anything. These are just fictional happiness units. So if you are consuming bundle A, you're buying zero pairs of pants, which means your total utility from just pants is obviously zero because you don't have any pants. The uh, next bundle, bundle B, you're, having, you're buying one pair of pants. So if you buy one pair of pants, your total utility from pants is now $10. If you consume bundle C, that's two pairs of pants, your total utility from pairs of pants is 18. So the marginal utility from that second pair of pants was eight utils but we're not going to focus so much on the marginal values this time, just total stuff. So as you consume more pairs of pants, your total utility from pants rises, right? It starts at zero with zero pairs of pants. And if you consume five pairs of pants, then your total utility is up at 30. So that's pretty good. Now, as we get into the total utility from shirts, which is the next column I'm going to reveal, it's going to leak, maybe look a little confusing at first. The reason it's going to look a little confusing is because the number is going to look like they go in the wrong way. But what you have to remember is because this is a trade-off situation, right? We're buying more pairs of pants means you have to um, buy fewer shirts, right? The numbers are going to move in opposite directions. So these numbers are going to get bigger and these numbers will be getting smaller from top to bottom. So look, looking at total utility from shirts. When you consume zero shirts or a bundle F, again, that's down at the bottom, right? Zero shirts, your total utility from shirts is zero. Buy two shirts, your total utility from shirts is 12. And as you buy more shirts, all the way up to buying 10 shirts, your total utility from shirts is 40. That's right here from bundle A. So just as these numbers get bigger as you go down, as they do here, these numbers get smaller as you go down. Because we just had to remember that buying more of one means you buy less of the other one. So the question is still, which consumption bundle maximizes utility? In other words, which is going to make you the best off, right? Because you'd love a situation where you could buy five pairs of pants and 10 shirts, because that would give you a total utility of 70, but that's not affordable for you, right? Only these bundles are the affordable options for you right now with the money that you have and the prices that these things are. So what you have to do is you have to figure out, okay, What's the total utility I get from each bundle? So from bundle A, you get zero utils from pants and 40 utils from shirts. That's this value right here and this value. Your total utility is 40. 
If you consume bundled B, you're getting 10 utils from pants, 36 utils from shirts. For that option, the total utility is 46. For bundle C, 18 plus 30 is 48. D, 46. E, 28 plus 12, 40. And for bundle F, that's 30 utils from pants and zero utils from shirts, giving you a total of 30. And again, all these utility numbers, I just made these up. So these aren't coming from any place. You know, I just imagined a situation where you get more utils from shirts, maybe. So to answer the question in bold, which consumption bundle maximizes utility, all you have to do is look at your total utility column and just hunt for the biggest number, which clearly looks like it's right there at 48. So that bundle, bundle C, we can say is the best bundle for this per person to purchase, right? Even though A and D and F, they're all efficient, just like bundle C, bundle C is going to give this consumer the most utility. So this is the affordable option that maximizes utility. So that's how it works with uh, utility and budget constraints. Thanks for watching.